Angela Barlow was last seen leaving a party back in October. For 23-year-old Angie Barlow, it began as a routine work night. She went there thinking everything was fine. But then she vanished. After eight months, there was a horrifying discovery. Angie's body was buried in a shallow grave. They definitely did not want anyone to find her, for sure. Who would want this young girl dead? There were mysterious text messages and some shocking surveillance video, but investigators couldn't crack the case. There's not enough, not yet. But Angie's loved ones believe she was lured into a trap. Angie was definitely set up. And they want answers. You will be caught, and you will pay for what you did to my daughter. What happened to Angie Barlow? Angie Barlow was the kind of girl who took care of people. If you needed a cup of milk, the shirt off her back, Angie would have gave it to you. She doted on her three young sisters. If they wanted something, all they had to do was call their big sister, and she was always right there to do whatever she had to do to help them out. Angie's dream was to go to cosmetology school and own her own salon. But she needed money for that. So in the meantime, she was working as a dancer, something her mother supported. She was definitely independent. She always wanted to take care of herself. Angie didn't have a boyfriend, but she was involved with a guy named Baron, who frequented one of the clubs in Indianapolis, Indiana, where she worked. She kind of attracted the same type, kind of rough guys. Baron was an alleged drug dealer who had served prison time. He also had a girlfriend, but Angie's mom knew that her daughter could take care of herself. She really didn't put up with much, and she didn't tolerate people treating her bad. In late 2016, Angie showed her roommate some mysterious text messages that were coming from an unknown number. It basically was like, do you do private parties? And I have a husband, I want to surprise. Angie did sometimes dance at private parties, but she declined this offer because whoever was sending the strange messages wasn't even giving a name. Still, the person persisted, texting for months. And finally, when Angie was broke after a trip to Miami and had no money to pay her rent, she decided she needed the cash too much to say no. I think out of desperation, she took a job that she really didn't feel comfortable doing. On October 26, 2016, as she headed to the private party, Angie sent friends the address of the gated community. She just basically sent me a screenshot saying this is the location where I'm going to be at. At 11.45 p.m., Angie posted a photo on Snapchat. She was posing in a bathroom, dressed to perform. But the next day, Angie's friends couldn't reach her. People had tried to call her and call her and call her all morning long, and no one had heard from her. Something wasn't right, so Angie's friends went to the police station to report her missing. They showed police the screenshot that Angie had sent to them. It had a phone number on it. It had uh, an address. It turned out that the address of the private party wasn't just some random location. Baron, the man Angie was involved with, lived there with his girlfriend, Raven. It was actually Raven who'd been sending Angie the strange text messages inviting her to the party. But when Angie's mom called Raven, she said she had no idea where Angie was. I said, I'm looking for my daughter. She goes by the name Diamond. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 I know Diamond. Oh, she left around three o'clock in the morning with some guy. It didn't make sense. Angie's loved ones say she would have told them if she'd gone to a second location. And if she'd known that Baron and his girlfriend were hosting the private party, she never would have gone in the first place. Raven did not like Angie. She would have never, never walked inside that apartment. Police didn't find anything in the apartment to suggest foul play. But when they looked at security footage from the gated community, they were stunned. There is video surveillance of Angie's car leaving the apartment complex, and Raven's car is leaving directly behind her car. When police brought Baron and Raven in for questioning, they claimed Angie had left their apartment without them. Surveillance footage told a very different story. It shows Angie's car leaving at 3.29 a.m., with Raven's car following close behind but Barron insisted they knew nothing about it. Once they were starting to be questioned about the vehicles and the video, they became very vague as far as what had happened after that. Police tried to zoom in, 
but the video was too dark and grainy to identify anything inside the cars, so they couldn't tell who was driving them. And with no direct evidence linking Barron and Raven to Angie's disappearance, police let them go. Desperate for answers, Angie's family organized search parties and distributed missing person flyers. Anything to remind their neighbors she's still missing. 12 days later, police got a big break. Angie's car was found abandoned eight miles from the apartment complex. Her purse, phone, and keys were missing. But where was Angie? We held on to hope every minute of every day. Eight months passed with no leads, and then police got a tip that led to a grisly discovery. Devastating news, the body fell this week. Angie's decomposed body was found buried in a shallow grave in a wooded residential area. I'm sorry, but just that you don't get out of your head at night. Police did not release the cause of death, but with a homicide investigation on their hands, their focus turned back to Barron and Raven. I consider them persons of interest in this case. But Barron and Raven weren't talking, and not long after Angie's disappearance, they moved to Phoenix, Arizona. All the evidence is leading to them. Now these people are gone. Police believe that Angie most likely died in Barron and Raven's apartment, and they don't think she was driving her own car in that security video. I think what had happened to her had already happened to her, and that somebody else had to have driven that vehicle. They also think Angie walked into a trap. I believe somebody else answered the door so that she can get lured in once she's in the apartment. It's an ambush, more or less. There are clues that seem to link Barron to Angie's death. The property Angie was buried on was once rented by his family. And the tipster who told police where to find Angie claims that he was one of several junkies hired by Barron to dispose of her body. They paid some car kids to bury my best friend. That's how they got away with it. But police say the tipster isn't a reliable witness, and they still do not have any direct evidence to arrest Barron and Raven for Angie's death. I have nothing concrete saying that they're the ones that did this. Angie's family is angry. They're convinced there's nobody else who could have killed her. And police have never identified any other suspects. I lost my firstborn daughter. She was one of my best friends. Police say they won't give up, and they are pleading with the public to help them solve Angie's murder. There are other people out there that know exactly what happened to Angela, and they need to come forward. Follow Still a Mystery for new episodes and updates.